What's up, y'all? I got a family feed, so let's get into this tea. We about to get into part two of the lies he told, girl. Sean Don got me wrapped, caught up in the rapture with this situation with Jillian. Let's get it. Part two of the lies he told. So we exchange phone numbers and we immediately start texting. About a week later, that's when we find out that the city is on shutdown because of COVID. Okay. So, our very first date, red flag number one. <laughs> e. Briggs is over. This is going to be several. Just so you know, it's going to be several. Oh, wait, wait. What did she say? Uh, first, a week later, that's when we find out that the city is on shutdown because of COVID. So, our very first date, red flag number one. Because it's going to be several. Just so you know, it's going to be several. Uh, first red flag. Hey, um, you know, if it's okay with you, I'm going to be at work all day. Um, is it okay if I pull up on you? You know, we can do dinner at your house. You don't have to cook. You know, we can order a piece of some light, some, you know, something like that. And I said, okay, cool. My son, the only son that I had at the time, which for this series, his name is Walker. <laughs> Walker was with his dad that day, so I had the house to myself. It had to be a Wednesday or Thursday. So um, I ordered the pizza, and he showed up. And so we sat, we talked, and we began to start having engaging conversations about who we were to one another, such as... Hi, I'm Jill. I'm from Mississippi. I have one kid, yada, yada, yada. All right. When you initially have a conversation with someone, you don't expect them to give you any information that's not true, right? So, well, people this do. This is how our conversation went. Jared tells me that. He was originally from Louisiana. He was born and raised in Louisiana. Um, Fran, what was the red flag? Was the red flag that they didn't get to go on the date and she paid for the pizza? I mean, sis, no disrespect. You knew he was broke. You already knew he ain't really had no money. Okay. Cause he has he's answering the phone at the restaurant that you're going to. I ain't being rude. I'm just saying. And then you decide to bring him to your house the first day. The first date, I blame this on her too. Josie, Nick, I ordered your stand. What you mean, friend? His grandmother. What stand? You know, raised him. He had a daughter. Thank you, but what stand, friend? I'm confused. Been married before, and his ex-wife cheated on him. <laughs> ex-wife cheated on him. Um, and she actually lives in Germany on a teaching job. <laughs> Sorry, just she late as hell for no he reason. He had a house with his ex wife in Humble, Texas. He told me during this conversation, this is our very first initial conversation over pizza. He told me that his mother was a physician. He told me that his mother had him at such a young age that, of course, his grandmother had to raise him. Of course, that's believable. Of course. He told me that. Oh, he the, went to the phone stand. Art Thank you so much, friend. At the Arts I see Institute. it now. Thank you, friend. He stated that he had three vehicles, that his credit score was amazing. I'm sorry, I, that didn't wasn't even supposed to happen. And he was cars over there. 
Wow, that is impressive. Uh, with a degree in hotel management, I believe he said, hotel management. By him being in the restaurant business, I had I definitely believe that. Okay. As the time goes on, as the parts come, as they start to move, I'll be exposing most of it. And if I remember other things, I'll make sure to let you know. So, like I said before, this was our initial conversation with one another. This is a new food, Chad. I told him, I said, wow, that is impressive. That's a lot. He also told me that he had, you know, money in his savings and stuff. He, he's a great saver. He knows he's financially stable, things of that nature. Okay. I said, okay, cool. No problem. That's awesome. I said, so the three cars, where are the three cars at? I mean, I've only seen you in the Camaro. And he was like, yeah, I keep those other two at my mom's crib because, you know, I live in an apartment complex. So, you know, I don't want to have all my cars over there. Okay, bet. That's understandable. I got you. I said three cars. That's that's crazy. All right. So the night goes on. I'm not going to sit here and cap one night. You gave him if the you booty. follow me, you follow me. That was a one night. You gave him the booty. And that man never left my house. He went to work. He would come back. The so y'all out here living like lesbians. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. What's up with y'all straight people? Just over here gallivanting around with one another, having some nasty sex. And then suddenly the nigga live with you. That's what we do. Just saying. So here y'all are. Mm. It don't look good on y'all. Next day. He went to work. He would come back the next Especially day. Especially a grown man. Man, you don't get the hell on. So during the time when I met him, he was driving a Camaro. It was a one runner. night. He picked me up from Prospect Park. I got an Uber there. He got off of work at Phil and Derrick's, and then he came and scooped me up. I noticed on that night oh, well, can't that he come had to my a damn house. tag Hello? on his Camaro. Jesse, and there was a name on the back, and the name said <laughs> Cece. <laughs> Oh, so and he was driving his baby mama car. Got it. That was weird to me because his name was Jared. Ah. So we go home, and you know I didn't bring it up or anything. So as time goes by, we basically shacking. Doll face shut. But let me be clear: <laughs> the first week that he started living with me. Living is great. He was crazy. paying my bills. Oh. He paid my rent. He was buying groceries. He was doing for my old for my son at the time. He was he was most definitely paying my household bills. And I was pocketing all my money. Most definitely was. This so, is when it's your fault. It's already your fault. One day he comes home I, and now I don't he's feel bad anymore. Ultima. I don't feel bad. And I said, what happened to the Camaro? He said, I'm letting it sit for a minute. You know, I need to get some tires on it or what have you. I keep spinning out, trying to come home. So, you know, um, I'm going to just let it sit. So now, you know, I'm going to drive the Nissan. I said, okay, cool. You know, I, I remember you saying you had a couple cars. I said, so where the Camaro at? He said, oh, I, I got it sitting over at my mom's crib. I said, okay, cool. He says, so um, I really would like for you to meet my daughter. Now, he told me on one of our initial conversations that he goes and... He Poor children. Poor children in the 2000s. The 2000s. Whatever you want to call it. Poor children. Because why? And then she moved her son... She moved a man in with her... Ugh, the man moved in the next day and you got a son, lady. Y'all be tripping. Y'all be tripping. At the grandmother's stop sign to get his daughter from school every day because her mother cannot do so. 
I said, wow, you pick up your kid every day? Like from the bus? He said, yeah, she's out there in Humble. So I drive out there to Humble, make sure she gets off the bus fine and everything. And then sometimes, you know, I go and take her to get something to eat and then I just run her back to her mom's. But she's going to school in her grandmother's district. It never dawned on me to ask him why the grandmama can't get her off the bus. Never, never dawned on me. So I said, okay, cool. And so I noticed that he worked extremely long hours. And when I mean extremely long hours, I mean, he would sometimes leave at six in the morning and he wouldn't be back to like two in the morning the next morning. Girl, he wasn't working. He was going back to his other home. You think he up from 6 a.m. all the way. And don't get me wrong, some people do this. But all the time? Nah. So he just out here working 22-hour shifts and shit. <laughs> you know, when Phil and Derek, they, they stay open till about 2, but he would say, no, nah, we got inventory, bay. We doing this, we doing that. So, of course, it, when you're in the restaurant business... I know, you know, they have long hours. I do know that. I do know that. So at least 12. I ain't knock him. I ain't asked too many questions. 22 is crazy. I was like, surely he working. He paying these bills. He working. I ain't worried about and what it. what is up with y'all not asking questions? That's why I f up. <laughs> I didn't ask shit. And I'm going to tell you now, when I get to part three, you'll start to see the lies he told no girl we see it already you didn't see it yeah sick hi part three the lies he told we in a new shirt and a new wig yeah so and in the car one day i said babe and you know going she got a baby bomb y'all see that car seat back there she got a baby bomb pick your daughter up how about you bring her back to the house and we go get something to eat i got walker let's just go and get something to eat he said okay let me hit her mom up let me make sure that's cool i'm gonna let you know some so he calls me back about an hour later he was like babe i'm bringing cc cool cool so he brings cc to my townhouse at the time okay so and she, he do have a daughter i guess i say all right let's go to toro hibachi spot around the, around the, around the corner because my baby love hibachi right so walker is excited to see this baby however cc is very quiet she's very weird mm. and i hate to say this about a seven-year-old baby mm. but i know children and i know when children are fearful and this baby was scared. Mm -mm. So I said, babe, do, do, does she talk? Like, is she okay? And he was like, yeah, babe, she just quiet. She quiet like a daddy. I said, ah, okay. Okay, I said, that makes sense. So I said, baby, you know, get whatever you want. I'm going to pay for it. Get whatever you want. Now, at this point in time, I did not know what I know now. <laughs> so I'm embracing this baby because I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to be with this man, if we, you know, having talks, because at this point we was having talks about a family. This is little I said, sister you know, or something? I'm, I, I, I love kids. I'm accepting of her, you know. I, hell, in my mind, I'm trying to figure out what size this baby with. She it got was. me nervous with the this baby talk. I am. I'm nervous. So, we all eating. I noticed that she not eating. I said, what's, I mean, what's wrong with her? And why did she get steamed rice? And all of us got fried rice. He was like, she don't, she don't like fried rice. She don't like fried rice. She don't like a lot of stuff. I said, okay, so she picky. That's cool. We go and we take her to an apartment over by the mall. I never forget it. And we drop her off. The next morning, that nigga wake up in a rage. Oh, oh, I'm in the bathroom. I didn't know what was going on. So I come out and I say, babe, what's wrong? You good? I'm thinking there's something going on at the job. He in a hurry. He, you know, he putting on clothes. I said, babe, what's wrong? He said, man, her mama come texting me talking about, you know, I lied to her talking about it was just going to be me and her going out to eat last night. And CeCe went home and told her mama that I was out to eat with you and your son. 
and now it's the whole thing, and now she she won't even let me see my daughter no more. Man, I'm so tired of this shit. He throwing shit, <laughs> and I said, man, wait a minute, hold on. I said, now, woman to woman, <laughs> the holler at her for you know, you know, Jesse, Jesse, she put the uh, refrigerator on that child. Right like for you, you know, I can, I can, you know, talk to her because maybe she is disrespected. She ain't met me yet. You know, don't bring nobody around my mother if I don't know you. You know, and so he said, "No, nah, baby, that's that bullshit. That bullshit." You know, he going in. I said, "Okay." I said, "I'm gonna let you handle." It. I said, "But." You got rights to your baby, right? Like you able to see your baby because you told me you was on you was on child support. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm on child support. I said, okay. Matter of fact, every time I look like that, just know it's some behind it when I look like that. Okay. I said, okay, well, you know, child support order, you get visitation rights. She can't deny you your baby, man. I said, and you know, I understand that you still trying to get this baby your last name or whatever, because I had a situation went down. Let me explain to you how he told me the situation went down of him finding out that CC was his baby. He used to work at Buffalo Wild Wings for 12 years. That man said that a woman started working at Buffalo Wild Wings and she and him had... 12 years is diabolical for a man. I'm sorry. Thing. Unless this nigga is the general manager or something. But he must. He got to be. She ended up getting pregnant, but he didn't know that she got pregnant because what? she left Buffalo Wild Wings before Sorry, she what? got pregnant. Obviously, they had a one night stand. And he said four years later, she walks into Buffalo Wild Wings with his daughter and said, meet your, meet, your, meet your daughter. This is your daughter. He claimed that they went and got swabbed, got a DNA test, and it was his baby. <laughs> He said he is still working to get the baby last name, his last name. But right now she got her mama last name. Okay, cool. Now, before I met this baby, I said, let me see a picture of it. He showed me a picture of it. I said, oh my God, she mixed. Damn. I said, okay, what she mixed with? He said, she mixed with Mexican. I said, okay. I said, show me a picture of her mama. He showed me a picture of the mother. But it's always a naiveness to their madness because when he showed me her page, it was her Facebook page. And I always remember names. I'm gonna remember names, numbers, street numbers, all that shit. I'm gonna remember all of that. So I remembered her name. So by this time, um, I said, okay, well, you know, let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you. Let me know. Mexican. <laughs> Another thing about Jared is he never wanted me to meet his family. He would always say, my mama work all the time. She ain't never, ever, you know, available. And if she is, she in third world partying with a little hood friends. He would say shit like that. Then he said his daddy wasn't in his life. So, because he was in and out of prison all the time. And his grandmama raised him. So, you know, he didn't really know what his daddy was. I said, okay. Out of the blue one day, he got in contact with his daddy. And he said, babe, you want to meet my dad? Absolutely. Absolutely, I want to meet your father. We went to go meet his daddy. We took, I took pictures with his daddy. Matter of fact, I had this same dress on when I met his daddy. Sure did. By this time, mind you, this was maybe three or four weeks after I had met his daughter. I said, uh, I said, hey, we got something to tell you. He, was, he needed to see his daddy because he wanted to tell his daddy that he had a baby on the way. Oh, uh, she we was, was pregnant. There, I ain't never said shit about the daughter. Did she ever say that she was pregnant? That I had met. Never said nothing because we was too excited about our new baby that we were about to have. Is she just bringing this up or am I missing it? <laughs> what? You don't just skip. Somebody please get Tisa to help her sis break that down. <laughs> this new info, cause what? She never, she just said it. Okay. He said, man, I'm just making sure, put a ring I'm, on make sure I'm not in this somebody. alone. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is my wife now, shit. Okay. So 
His dad started calling and checking up on his new daughter-in-law. He called me one day. He said, hey, baby, how you doing? I said, Pop, I'm good. I'm good. I said, everything going well. We got a doctor's appointment set up after we leave Mississippi because at this point, I'm going to take homeboy to go see my folks in Mississippi because at this point, you got to meet Mr. Mr. Daddy. You got to meet my daddy, okay? And he was like, okay, okay, okay. I said, and speaking of, <laughs> okay, I forgot right. to tell you when I saw you that I had met your other beautiful granddaughter. He said, Chucky daughter. I said, Chucky. He said, yeah, my, my, my daughter Chucky. I said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. not, not, not Jared, sister. I said, Jared, baby. He said, Jared, baby. I said, yeah, Jared, daughter, you know, CC, man, stop playing. He said, Jared ain't got no I said, man, Jared has a seven-year-old daughter. Maybe you miss you confused because, you know, he he was you you been in and out and stuff. And he said, man, I've been, man, I ain't been in and out that damn long. And to be honest with you, to be honest with you, he said, I'ma just tell you this. My nephew told me when I was locked up that Jared is a stone cold liar. Nigga, he just said, so be I'm gonna lying. tell you right now. Ain't no way in the world Jared would have had a baby. Without telling my mom, telling his mama or me. Ain't no way he would have done that. He said, Have you talked to his mama? I said, I ain't never met his mama. So he said, Exactly. Uh, so hold on. Now, CC, oh, the daddy did not say, That's my granddaughter from Chucky. So we don't know who C got it. I got to go to church, but part four will be coming tonight. Stay tuned. Girl, we ain't got nothing else to do at this point. Okay, guys. Thank y'all so much for allowing me to go to church. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Let me do, um, let me do a, I'm a, I'm a dial this thing back. You guys have a lot of valid questions and I know that I left a lot of things out, but I did not do it intentionally because I'm sitting around here trying to get y'all a low level overview of my story when I really supposed to be giving y'all every specific detail. We need all of that. And I apologize for that. Cause what? So let's get back to it. Okay. At the very beginning, I told you guys that the brunch occurred on January 5th of 2020. After the brunch, I got extremely sick. My best friend left that Tuesday by that Wednesday or by that Tuesday night. Huh? I was already running a fever. Went to the minute clinic. They told me, hey, it ain't the flu, none of that stuff or whatever. Nobody at this time knew about COVID, okay? I'm almost deathly ill on the couch Damn. for a good two weeks. Damn. My kid wasn't here with me or anything, so I was basically trying to fend for myself. I started feeling a little bit better closer to maybe the end of January. I had, I remember where I was. I remember making the phone call to Phil and Derrick's and asking for him and to say, hey, I want to put in a good review on him. Then I remember getting the call back from the from the owner or the co-owner. And she told me, hey, we appreciate that. Boom, boom, boom. One, one, one. I called back shortly after. <laughs> this was not in the same day, guys, but I called back shortly after. And I got his number. I'm not going to say that it was the same night, but it was shortly after he said, hey, I'm working like crazy. Let me come to your house. We're going to order pizza. We're going to, you know, we're going to talk it out. And that's what happened. Every day after that night, he did not leave my town home, meaning that he would go to work and he would come back. Okay. Nine twenty two hours. nighter did produce a little beautiful three-year-old. Uh, okay. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, because you didn't clear it in the beginning, honey. So you telling me you done met this man at a restaurant, gave him a power raid. He cock blocked on your money move, although he could have been lying, too. So he might have saved you from another bullet. OK, and then he also still, though, gave you a stray. Uh by coming to your house that night and putting a goddamn baby up in you. Lord have mercy. Okay. 
I'm really not too concerned about the the dates right now or the months or whatever because I'm trying to make sure that I give you guys this high level overview so there won't be any discrepancies in the story because I am telling 100% truth on this shit. Can't even sit here and make this up. When I met the daughter, I met the daughter in February. We went out for hibachi because someone commented and said, well, the shutdown didn't happen until March, sis. Cool. I appreciate that because see, the shutdown for me happened when I didn't go back to work after I got sick. Okay. So the Houston shutdown probably happened in March, but at some point when people started getting sick early or mid February or early or late March, I mean, or late February, uh, Phil and Derrick's was doing like small capacity. Like you couldn't go in there and do brunch on the Sunday like we normally do. And, you know, the DJ in there, that shit wasn't happening. So I, like I said, again, I will probably be off about the dates. I apologize about that. We took the daughter to eat. And then shortly after I met his daughter, I met his dad. Okay. I met the dad in February. All right. When I met the dad, I knew when I met him that I was pregnant. When I met the daughter, I did not know that I was pregnant. OK, mm -hmm. so with that being said, I want to start part four, but I also want to clarify something else that I did not tell you guys. I met his dad in the latter part of February, but on February 28th, he proposed to me on the side of the bed. There was no, you know, exotic engagement. Uh, or now, how the hell you forget all this? Ever like. Hey, will you marry me? You're about to have my child. I want this for life with you. This is for lifers. All that shit. Yes. Okay. I said yes. I remember going to the nail shop that day. Facebook blowing up. Instagram blowing up. Yes, yeah, she getting married. Yada, yada, yada. I remember all of that. Okay. So now we're going to enter into how <clears throat> the rest of the conversation went with dad. But we're also going to tap into another Thing because now I am going to talk to you about the ex-wife and the story about that. Part four of the lies that he told. So I quickly get off the phone with his daddy and I remembered that I saw the girl's Facebook page, the alleged baby mama. So I go to her Facebook page and I start stalking. I did find a picture of Cece on her page. And there was a comment that was on that girl's picture. And it was from an older African-American woman. That lady commented and said, look at Granny's baby. The woman had Cece's last name and the mom had Cece's last name. So at that time, I knew, ain't no way this could be this boy's biological baby. I waited for him to come home. And I said, Jared, I have a question for you. And please believe me that if I ask you a question, I already know the answer to it. So please don't lie to me. He did. I said, is CC your biological kid? <coughs> that boy looked at me and he said, yeah, yeah, that's my baby. I, I already told you about, you know, the Buffalo Wild Wings. I said, I hear you. I said, but let me tell you what I found out. That's your uh, Today, niece. I contacted your father and we had a conversation. And that conversation went a little bit about him asking how I was doing. And also I told him that I had met CC and he had no idea who CC was. He told me that you don't have any children, Jared. So... Are you going to be honest or what's like, I need you to tell me what's going on. That man looked at me and he said, that ain't my baby. He said, but I was with her mom for some time and I was about to get ready to try and help raise her because her dad is in jail. Her mom is still legally married to the father of that child. And I got so close to her and her baby 
that I told her that I would take responsibility as a man to help her raise her baby. And I looked at that man and I said, so you mean to tell me that you went and picked up another woman's, another man's baby and claimed that child as your own and brought it to your new this baby situation. mama, your actual baby and mama. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I mean, because, you know, I said, but you also told me that you was on child support. So that was a lie too. Like you're not on child support. Uh -uh. I give her, you know, I pay half of her rent. I said, you pay half of her rent. You can't afford half of her rent, gang. You pay half of this woman's rent, Cap. Jared. Yeah, you know, I'm doing the best that I can to try to help her. Cap. Y'all, all of that was a lie. We we know. <laughs> that man was not paying nobody's half rent. Child. He was who, not doing that. Who knows he me? He was not doing that. So that was the very first lie that I found out quickly. But as this series progress, you will find out how many lies this man has told me. And they don't stop there. Part five coming up. Child. Part five of the lies he told. So time progresses. We ended up going to Mississippi. He definitely meets my family. We go to Piccadilly. He tells my parents at Piccadilly. It's 25 like, oh, parts. Yeah. You know, I used <coughs> to be a very big dude. And I'm not going to lie. That Shonda. man was heavy. Shonda, I put this on our plate. Over 350 pounds easy. Now he's about 186 in current time, 186 pounds. So he was telling them about how he got um, weight loss surgery done, how he's been able to maintain it, because believe it or not, the boy could not eat a full Lunchable. So I knew he had some type of gastric sleeve or something like that. He told them the same things that he told me on the very first night, how he was raised in Louisiana, how, you know, his... His grandmother, you know, helped raise him and that was his mom until he found out that, you know, later on down the line that his real mama was his alleged sister, which she his was there his entire life from his my understanding. <clears throat> and he just went down the line and he was telling them everything that he had told me. His real mom was his alleged sister. On the sister. way back from Mississippi. Am I missing something again? We came the Beltway, so we passed through the Atascacita Humble area. Sis said, need help hey, on the story. You want me to take you over there to where me and my ex-wife used to live? I said, you talking about like your old house? He was like, yeah, because I know at some point we're probably going to be looking for houses. So I kind of oh, showed just you a bad storyteller for the real. house that we stayed in because I want a much bigger house this time. Three, three, three in the chat. I said, okay, that's cool. Child, Sean Don, blame Sean Don. We drive into a subdivision and we landed on a random street. Now, after the whole baby situation with CeCe, I left a part out about CeCe, but I'll get back to that. Chrissy, I, before we, before we uh, continue, I just want y'all to know I'm over here looking at a, uh, <laughs> a ASMR <clears throat> and she she eating chicken wings. And I've been feeling so much better that I'm not eating chicken wings. But I want some chicken wings so bad. Chrissy, why is it that chicken wings, aside from being fried, right? Because, I, I mean, I put them in the air fryer too, so ain't no grease. Why does chicken... Make me feel like I'm about to die. I don't like that. Like, I feel like it lowers my blood pressure or my cholesterol. I'm not cholesterol, but it's the processing of the meat. Right. Girl, I want some chicken so bad. <laughs> I just, I've been wanting it for like the past two days. I'm not going to eat any. If I eat any, it'll be one wing. I don't go past. Well, I'm a, I'm lying. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I ate about three. I was drunk, though. 
I ain't feel like I was about to die. It's probably because I was already drunk, dying anyway. But um, I just wanted to put that out there. But I feel so much better not eating chicken. Oh, but it sucks because I want it. But anyhow, anyway. We go down a random street and he points out to a house and he said, babe, that's the house that we used to have. Now, I want to tell you guys the story about the ex-wife and the situation with him. Somebody just asked me why I'm not eating chicken. Chicken makes me feel like I'm about to die. That's the best way I could put it. I eat chicken. I just feel like. Not like the itis. I just feel like, oh shit, I done ate poison or something. It's real bad. So I stopped eating it. And ever since I stopped eating chicken and eggs, I do not feel like that anymore. So he told me, remember in one of those parts, I told you that he said the fake a wild chicken, chicken right. on him when they were married. So the storyline about the ex wife is that. He was working out of town because he was training for different Buffalo Wild Wing restaurants that were up and coming in different local cities like Austin, San Antonio, Dallas. He's doing that. <laughs> he claims that the man next door was sleeping around with his ex-wife and he came home one day unexpected. <clears throat> his wife was home from work. She was not expecting him to be home. He told me that that man next door was sitting on his couch, on Jared's couch, holding his remote, watching his TV, butt ass naked. My problem with these women in these stories is you stay with the nigga that's lying. You already stay with him. You believe him again? Oh, my God, y'all. I got to show y'all something. Oh, my God. And I'm not uninterested in the story. She kind of pissed me off when she left out the whole, um, what you call it? Hold on. <laughs> Look at that chicken wing. Oh, my God. Ah, oh. okay, sorry. Okay. When she left a couple things out, I'm like, come on now. Now, I don't think that she's lying. I just think that she's just, she's really not a good storyteller. <laughs> That's not chicken. <laughs> this man told me that they got into a tussle. That's the whole. <laughs> that next door neighbor tried running out of the front door, and he ends up shooting him in the leg. Oh, I, I want to make one of these. Did he go to jail for that? Oh, that looks so good. told the officers that it was self-defense. And they let him off. He did not do any jail time because of that. Because the man was technically in his home. So he done shot somebody in the leg. Allegedly. I believed that story. <laughs> I did, guys. I believed it. And I know it makes me look like a fool. But I did. I believed it. I really believed that that woman cheated on him and he shot that next door neighbor in the leg. I really did. We pull off that street. And we head home. Before we could make it home, I was on my phone on Harris County Appraisal District. I was smart enough this time. I'm dumb about a lot of shit that's going to that's gonna occur on this series. But I was smart enough to get the house number, the name of the street, subdivision, all of that. I punched it into HCAD, property search. If you got to be with a person and you got to do that, Y'all need to be with him. <laughs> Come on, y'all. The same owners have been owning that house since 2011, since that lot was sold, since the, the, the bricks was put on it. And his daddy already told you he a liar. It was already there. Daddy tried to save Nobody, him. no other couple <laughs> had that house. I did a little bit more deeper research. I took the owner's name and I plugged it in Facebook. 
I got to the point where I searched so hard and so long that not only did I find the owners of that house on Facebook, I found the picture of when they posted on Facebook that the lot was sold and they were standing there where there was foundation still on that lot. The house ain't even been built. They were a newlywed Caucasian couple. And that was not a picture of Jared and his ex-wife. We made it home. I got out that car. I came upstairs. I got in that bed and I put my head to the back of that headboard. And he said, babe, you feeling okay? Because mind you, I'm pregnant. And I looked at him and I said. And then you pregnant by that fool? I have a question about that house. So, with that house. At least he admit to the lie, girl. When you moved there, he told me. I said, you moved there it's on so-and-so date. I said, and you and your ex-wife used to live there. Yeah, babe, that's where we lived. I said, okay. I said, so who is Ashley and Justin? He said, I don't know Ashley and Justin. I said, because Ashley and Justin been owning that house since 2011. Child. He said, babe, where you get that from? I said, because this HK. And I turned the phone around. Is I said, because this is HK. Yep. You never owned that house. So who is Ashley and Justin if they're the owners of the house? That man told me, bae, man, I don't even want to tell you this. I said, tell me what? All right, man. Well, me and my ex-wife split. Ashley and Justin let me crash in their garage. They got their garage set up like a man. Okay. And to be honest with you, babe, you saw the boxes in the garage when we passed through there. That's actually where I stored my shit. Y'all. I said, Jared. Y'all. I don't even believe that you know Ashley and Justin. Because you don't. He said, babe, I used to work with Justin. <clears throat> Buffalo Wild. Again, it's another Buffalo oh, Wild Wings. Oh, girl. I said, Jared. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the refrigerator, friend. More this I could take, Bay. I promise you. I promise you ain't lying. I said, okay, cool. He got so upset and so <laughs> angry because I kept saying, "All right, cool. All right, cool. Don't even worry about it." Okay, cool. Friend, I want you to know you bought a total different refrigerator. Do you know that? I don't know how that's possible, but do you know that? <laughs> he kept getting so angry. That's that he crazy. ended up storming out of that house and he was gone for hours. I have no clue. Really How did that him. happen? So now that we have talked about the supposed house that they lived in, let me get to the part about the ex-wife. So I, I asked him, I said, and you say that you got married when? He told me a date. Might have been 2015, 2016. I said, and you said her name was Paris Wood. He told me her last name. We're going to say it's Pierce Williams. I said, why it ain't no divorce decree for you and Pierce? Mm. He said, we got married in Louisiana. And then you got a smart woman. I mean, she's smart as hell. Zara, I'm said, getting oh, it today. Okay, y'all got married in Louisiana. I said, okay, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't checked Louisiana. He said, oh, yeah, if you check the records, they do. I said, okay, bet. I'm going to check them. Ooh. I'm going to damn sure check them. He said, why are you asking me all of these questions? I said, because... You done lied about having a daughter. You done lied about the house. Now, if you do have an ex-wife, I really kind of want to know now what really happened with y'all because... Jesse, you got my no message about the refrigerator. Ain't no way you done shot nobody. So now, let's move into the ex-wife story. It's not the same one. I don't know what happened. Parson All right, y'all, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a break. I'm caught up. I'm caught up. But I'm going to take a break. Um, First of all, she's not the worst storyteller. Just she have you wondering a little bit, like, what the hell going on? Everything just ain't accurate of what she be saying. So um, not accurate. We just got to catch up later. So, 
We will be back for the part two of this. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hey. Yeah.